In Iran today, three women arrested for protesting against wearing the hijab head covering have been sentenced to a total of 55 years and six months in prison. This is a video of the women provided earlier this year by Amnesty International. A so-called revolutionary court in Tehran delivered the verdict to the women who are already behind bars in the notorious Karchak prison. Human rights activists say that the women had been forced to confess to crimes that they did not commit. All right, let's talk about all of this news with Judy Jasser. Judy is the founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Good to have you with us, Judy. Let's start off with this pushback against the law in the Netherlands, which is banning face covering in public. Now, this does include the burqa, but to be clear, this includes ski masks, motorbike helmets, any kind of face covering. Do you see this as infringing on freedom of religion or as a law which is just necessary to ensure public safety? I've always supported a ban on face covering. I think that uh, part of freedom is being able to have an identity and autonomy, individual rights. Individual rights are born in our pictures, in who we are, in, in our identity. A faceless person without an identity really is not a, a human being. Under that might be a human being. But religious freedom, I think, ends where people can then use that to commit crimes. In the United States, there's Supreme Court precedent for that, where there were laws against demonstrations in the 1800s with masks and others, and the Supreme Court ruled in the 20th century that people don't have a right to large demonstrations for mas with masks because they can cause mayhem and then the police can't identify who commit crimes. So I think we should enforce it based on safety. And by the way, it then helps protect uh, oppressed women within families who are forced to wear a, a, a to be faceless and not have an identity. I mean, on, on the focus of safety, uh, Judy, you're so right, because a lot of the time uh, profilers say that they look at people's faces for cues of coming from sort of how they shift their eyes if they're about to perpetuate some kind of terrorist attack or for suspicious behavior. That's what police look out for when they're patrolling. But there is this reluctance by the police and by the public transport administrations to enforce this law in the Netherlands. Why do you think we're seeing this reluctance? Well, this, uh, I think, lack of confidence in the laws that portray freedom that are part of Western modernity, need, we need to buck up and start enforcing them. Not, not physically. They should just be arrested and taken. They shouldn't have the veil ripped off, no assault or anything by police, but rather simply arrested as violating a public presence law that includes not covering your face. So they need to understand that there's, I mean, we've done this with uh, uh, crimes, honor crimes committed here in Arizona or elsewhere in which we say, you know, listen, you need to interrogate families that are protecting. You need to do this for the good of our community, for society and elsewhere, that police need to say, yes, it's not just about political correctness and honoring religious mores, but rather holding Muslim communities accountable to a value of the societies they live in, which I think prevents a bigotry of low expectations. I want to get uh, the focus now on what's happening in Saudi Arabia. Another monumental reform has been passed. It now allows females to finally obtain passports and to travel alone. Now, Judy, granted, it's absurd that they had uh, this law in the first place, but this is really quite a significant breakthrough, isn't it? Absolutely. We've been waiting, this for, waiting for this for a long time. And finally, uh, whatever forces at, at power right now, be it MBS or, or their desire to be closer to the West. I visited Saudi Arabia three times as a member of the U.S. Commission on Religious Freedom. And while they treated us very well, they sort of continued to do whatever they wanted because the president, whoever party was in the White House, provided a, a waiver because of national security. And now they're changing uh, for whatever other reasons exist in ways that are really impressive, which is to allow women to travel, to allow them to be employed and have employment rights, and to allow them to have the rights to, to be guardians for their children, which they did not have. Now, having said that, those are pro forma without me being able to turn on Saudi television and look at the Grand Mosque and have an imam say that this is the ruling from the jurist, jurisprudential perspective in which there's no reform or ishtihad, modern interpretations that back that up. Because right now, 
Michelle, all it is is a royal decree. Right. And you're going to get women arrested for whatever reason. There's still rape laws that don't defend victims. It actually makes victims into criminals. There's still tons of problems. And if they really have freedom to move, there should be caravans of women like we see in Mexico coming to America, caravans of women going to the UAE, to Bahrain, to Jordan, to the border. What would happen if that happened and they wanted to leave? I don't think they'd be given the right to leave. And there would be no jurists who have a body of law to protect what the royal decree has said. So in many ways, it's just a pro forma. Well, that is uh, disappointing if you don't think it's actually going to result in anything substantial. I think this is the first step. Absolutely. We have to take it at face value. We'll see how they implement it. But until, make no mistake, until you have jurists giving a new school of interpretation of their Wahhabi laws, of their uh, school of thought that back up that so that court tests of these laws have meaning, just like when they stop support of the Brotherhood. They can say globally their politics have changed instead of all the billions they were infusing, but until they abandon political Islam from a jurisprudential perspective, the interpretation, the anti-Semitism, all the things in their, their school of thought right. still are coming from the pulpits. So still a long way of reform ahead. Judy Jasser, thank you so much. Appreciate it as always. Thank you.